It is a race by race preview time for Happy Valley on Wednesday night. Tom Wood here to provide us with selections across the nine races. We race on the C plus three course and the first gets underway at 6.40. In the first we have Savvy Sheik on the class drop. Wood on fire is a seven time course and distance winner. Glory Cloud comes back in trip from his 1400 metre debut. Philos goes the other way up to 1200 metres. Golden Luck has a wide draw again. We've got Joyful Life drawn barry number three. First look at the Valley for him. Him. Yeah boy, ran second behind Telecom Speed last time in Harmony and Home and Bo Goss, both last start place getters. The pace here, Tom, comes from Golden Luck, Kellandini. Good run for Joyful Life. Yeah, barrier 11 for a Golden Luck, so might have to do a little bit to get across here. Kellandini normally sits handy. Uh, Joyful Life, well, the key is I think he's finally drawn a, a gate here. He's at 5, 7, 12, 11. He's come up with barrier 3 this time uh, round. Uh, Philos behind him. Uh, looks tricky for Wood on fire. He might actually have to go all the way back to last. He did that last time out from barrier 11. Alice Wong riding for Michael Chang. We're going to start though with Wood on Fire in the first replay, but he ends up running ninth here. Killandini fifth is normally not too far away, but is still a long standing maiden. This run from Yeah Boy was very good, Tom. He made up many lengths. He was back to the 1200 metres, carries the same weight. The best Wood on Fire would win this race, but is he going well enough? Well, he doesn't seem to be at this point. He, he was a winner, of course, uh, carrying 130 pounds off a rating of 55, going back five runs ago. Yeah Boy was good there, but look, he. His win was a bit of a flash in the pan, wasn't it? He hasn't really gone on with it apart from that run there. And so Killandini just drawn wide and long standing maiden, I thought. Tough here. Okay, we'll throw that replay up. Move on to the next one. Bo Goss better last time running third. He did have every chance on the inside, given a, a perfect trip from Keith Young from Barry number two, but he does draw Barry number two again this week. And he is eligible for class five if they wish to take it with him, this four year old to buy your time test. He had that lovely run on the trail, as you said, Mark, and uh, had every every chance uh, there and uh, boxed on okay. This, of course, and behind a uh, super joy and fun. Uh, so he could be one for, for multiples, but uh, probably happy to see him get down a grade as well. Harmon at home has been down a grade. He comes back to a class four, and uh, that means he's going to carry uh, the weight of 117 pounds. Alexi Bedell and Danny Shami hasn't won for a while, but he's a two-time course and distance winner and an eight-year-old. I think the, the light weight uh, gives him an opportunity here. Hasn't won for 1,064 days. He followed Hercules into the race. Hercules was able to uh, to win this and uh, look to have every chance over the, the concluding stages. So with a light weight, uh, a reasonable draw as well, uh, I think that uh, can give him his opportunity here too. Joyful life. Tom has always trialled up well, like there is something there. This is his last start on the all weather. As you said during the speed map, he's finally drawn a gate. Is this the week for Joyful Life? Yeah, look, I hope it is. Uh, coming to Happy Valley for the first time, I thought being on the all weather last time out, a son of Swiss Ace, it might have been an assistance to him because we know they go well on this surface but he was just a fair seventh here but did cover some ground and also was a bit keen so a couple of little things did go against him here but with a good draw should easily get into a lovely trailing position which gives him an opportunity to race that doesn't have a lot of depth. No, it's pretty open one to kick off the night isn't it? Yeah it certainly is and I'll go with him on top here uh, Joyful Life, uh, horse at number 9. Savvy Sheik's interesting coming back in grade as well off a rating of 59 that's where his last win was and uh, was on the all weather last time out behind Maniac Harmony and Home and Glory Cloud might come up an okay price here. He's trialled at Happy Valley, he ran second in a, a recent trial on the all weather behind Triumphant Warrior and he placed it to the weekend and so he was 21 to 1 for his uh, debut dropping back in trip here 9 1 11 and 4. It's a win for Derek Long and Ricky Yu for Tom to kick off Wednesday night at the Valley. The first of the two class one races is race number two. This is the distance class one over the 1650 metres. Telecom fighters back to his favourite trip of the 1650. Happy Together and La City Blanche have been racing each other quite a bit recently. Dancing Codes won a trial since his last start fourth behind Mugen. Nordic Dragon has the blinkers off and rising from ashes is now with Michael Chang. Straight in the front here, Tom Telecom Fighters, and uh, he has gone plenty of races over the 1650 where he's seen it out from the front. He has, and so they'll be trying to work their magic again with him off the front, and they might even try and back the tempo off a little bit as uh, well with the Telecom Fighters. Nordic Dragon to a trail, you'd think, from barrier number one, Mr. Ascendancy, it won't be too far away. La City Blanche normally gets back, had a, a wide run last time out, but uh, small field, uh, you'd say it'd be fairly tactical. Tom's been a busy, busy man today. He was at Sha Tin early on Tuesday morning to catch up with some of the key players, including 
Harry Bentley on Mr Ascendancy. Harry, Mr Ascendancy only having his fourth run uh, this season. What was your overall take on his last run in a, a pace-dominated race on the all-weather? Yeah, really happy with it. Um, you know, he he ran a, a mighty race, I thought, in defeat, and um, you know, his previous run to that as well was good. So clearly, he's he's turned a bit of a corner with his form, and um, yeah, he's in good or, good order. How do you feel about him coming back to Happy Valley? He's only had limited starts here, but he has placed in the past. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, you know, he is a galloper, but I like the 1650 for him, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful of a, a good run at, at the valley. He trialled back on the, the ninth on the your weather over 1,200 metres. Were you pleased enough with what he produced that morning? Yeah, pleased enough. You know, he always gets taken off his feet a little bit over that distance in the trials, but um, he gave me a good feel. What about Class 3, 1650, a small field, only six other rivals, um, barrier seven of seven. No doubt it'll be tactical sort of set up the race. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Obviously, Happy Together is, is my main sort of target, I would expect. But, um, you know, he's... It's going to be. He's quite a straightforward ride, and uh, he can he can sit wherever and, and be pretty happy. Um, he's not going to pull or anything like that. So we'll just see how we break, and obviously I'll speak to Ricky and see what tactics we want to adopt. Another winner at the weekend so for Casper fans. Always been a, an avid supporter of yours. So were things ticking along relatively well? Yeah, happy with how how things are going. Obviously very grateful for Casper with the with the support and. Um, yeah, Packing Hurricane's been a, a, a great uh, support of mine, so uh, I've had a couple of wins on him now. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully more to come. Got a good association with that horse. Packing Hurricane does Harry Bentley. So that's our first start for race number two with Mr Ascendancy. Tom, here is some replays. La City Blanche, happy together. This is their clash last time over the 1,800 metres. This at Sha Tin. La City Blanche was hard written from a fair way out in this race, but he sticks on and happy together sees plenty of traffic in the straights. Yeah, and it's it's a stable mate, so money catcher in front of him and uh, sword point to his outside, and there's just just no gap for him to get through at uh, this point. Money catcher not going anywhere, and uh, sword point just sort of holding his line, so you can see just nowhere to, to go there. Eventually, a run does open up because uh, encountered sort of gets uh, squeezed up there as well, and he's able to to poke through over on the inside. So a lot to like about the run really unlucky and um, last city Blanche was game there considering he had a, a really tough run in transit and he's always staying on you have to maybe wonder if 1650 coming back in trip is ideal for him well this is their most recent hit out around happy valley back on the 10th of january in the january cup and happy together getting a lovely run on the roller city blanche followed him everywhere this day during the run you can see happy together around midfield La city blanche being worked on again but that appears to be just him the other two in this replay, Telecom Fighters lead still about the 200 metres, so he comes back to the 1650 for this and rising from ashes, won two in a row and then has gone right off the boil and he pulled up Aurora twice out of his last three starts. Yeah, so I'm happy to, to take a set against him in this sort of uh, lineup. Uh, he'll be uh, back and uh, looking for a, a little bit of luck and probably a little bit of pace on as well, uh, rising from ashes. Happy to hear that, more than convincing here when winning. Once he got up to them at the, the 200 metres, put them away uh, very quickly. So if he can, if he can produce anywhere near that, uh, he's going to be tough to beat here. Where do you slot in dancing code in this sort of race? He just needs things to go his way. He's had to overcome some bad luck, some wide draws. First start, 1650. You concerned by the distance? No, I wouldn't be too worried. He, he looks like a horse that would uh, appreciate the, the step up and trip the way. He certainly run home in some of these races at Charter. And this has been a, a good form reference. Mugen, Red Line. Uh, or Tula Begil there as uh, well. How deep is your love? Or Tula Begil is going to line up again at the weekend, so over 1,600 metres at Sha Tin. And ju just the way he's always running on at the end would suggest that 1650 should be right up his alley, and he's a bit like happy together. Uh, they're both two from two here at the circuit. So uh, who keeps the unbeaten record? I think it'll be happy together. Ultimately, uh, Mark uh, here for Alexi Bedell and uh, Frankie Law wasn't helped by his stablemates last uh, time out. Dancing code is between those two. Last City Blanche and uh, Mr Ascendancy uh, makes it in as so well. Thought it was tough to make a case for the other trio, including Nordic Dragon, who's well out of form at the moment. Two, four, three and seven. It's a classy card of racing on Wednesday night. That's the first of the Class 1s, race two over the longer 16.50.
race number three for the Class 4 Gallopers and it's run over the distance of 1,200 metres this one with Enfolded on the class drop. Jolly Companion makes his Happy Valley debut but he did trial here last September. Happy Fat Cat ran second last time behind Dan Attack, great achiever. He raced wide behind Happy Golf last start. Shanghai Style has trialled well again since running eighth on the all weather. Lapras first start since October, cheek pieces and the shadow roll come off him. We've got uh, Heyday jumping to the 1,200 metres and down the bottom, Alloy King with a very cheeky race in this grade last time and Valiant Elegance from the 1,000 to the 1,200. Tom, he used to have good pace, Valiant Elegance, but Happy Fat Cat and Alloy King might have more. Yeah, well, Happy Fat Cat uh, last time out uh, stalked the pace. The race ultimately won by uh, Dan Attack and uh, the horse to his outside. Alloy King led up and then tried to pinch a break in the straight. Uh, Shanghai style, uh, no trial around Happy Valley in the, the past for him. He was pushed out a little bit in his most recent one. Got Heyday, uh, Hercules got a fair way back last time out. That was from Barrier 12, but uh, he was able to pick them up and put them away quite nicely last time out. And here is that uh, win, Tom, with Hercules. It was in Class 5, but he'd been racing well since he'd been in that grade. He's not going to find a much more winnable Class 4 to come back into than this one. No, he's still very much well rated, so getting on an age, uh, an eight-year-old, but a typical sort of Hugh Bowman ride here. Uh, drop him out the back from uh, barrier number 12 and uh, let him find his feet and run home strongly. And that's what he did, and he'd, he'd been knocking on the door for a, a wee while. There's no, there's no reason why he can't go back here, back to back here with 120 on his uh, back the, the way he's uh, won there. And this, again, isn't an overly strong race. It's a good start for the replays. The second one, poor old Keith Young. He deserved to win this on Alloy King. He'd done everything right, looked to have pinched it. This by far his best performance in Class 4, Alloy King, but he does have a wide draw. Great Achiever, luckless in the run this night, he had to cover ground. Yeah, I, I do quite like Great Achiever here. Um, Four-year-old by Savabil, you'd say he's looking for a, a little bit further. His first up run, run was very good, so his second up run was even better, beaten three quarters behind Mega Bonus and then ran into a happy golf and co last uh, time out. So with a, a good draw and a, a race, as I said, that's not strong, he's a big player here. And finally, Happy Fat Cat, can he repeat this? There he is, up outside Super Axiom, who we know loves to lead. He's got that early pace, Happy Fat Cat, and on the speed map, he was right on the speed again this week. Yeah, and C plus three just might aid his chances here as well. It was definitely a, a better showing from him last time out. Took the trail behind to Super Axiom, did momentarily hit the front, but to then was knocked off uh, by uh, Dan Attack. That was from barrier 12, so shouldn't have to do as much work at the start from uh, barrier number six. But uh, overall, in the end, I left him out. A lot of chances here. Who do you like to win race number three? Quite like Great Achiever in this. Uh, drawn well, the Benno Jung, Jerry Chouts, a combination that is certainly in form at the moment. So he's on top. Jolly Companion uh, comes to Happy Valley for the first time. Beaten three and a half behind Panda last uh, time out. Got a bit of a whack at the start. So there may be a little excuse there for him. Hercules is in. And to give the Khan a chance here as well, Barrier 11, he'll be back no doubt to, from there. Was slow away last start, but did make some minor inroads last time out, did the Khan. So he'll be a, a decent price. For Casper Founds at Karis Teton. 4 2, 8 and 5. That is race number three. It is also the first leg of the early treble. And the second of the Class 1 races is race number four. This is the sprint with Duke Y at the top of the book, coming back from the 1200 last time behind a red line. Adios returns after a bleed on the 7th of November. Sonpak Fu, Group 1 fourth last time. Kirpany scratched on the 7th of January. Lame left four, has run second at the Chung Fa trial since. Biddy Charge has got a good record course and distance. And Tomodachi Kokoro straight from Class 3 to Class 1 on the back of that last start victory. Kirpany the leader here, Tom, and he gets that all-important £10 claim. Yeah, so he's only got 118 on his back. He's had a lameness issue with a lift at four, but uh, has trialled OK since up at Chungfa. Does like to go forward. Another one that can raise handy is Majestic Knight to ride there for Ben Thompson. Tomodachi Kokodo uh, might be able to uh, secure the uh, trail here from uh, Barrier 7. He is uh, drawn uh, near the outside in this uh, small field. Uh, the outside, of course, is Majestic Knight, so maybe he can cart up across there as well. Uh, Sonpak Fu back. Duke Wai led last at time out but uh, don't know that they'll do that here from Barrier 6 at Happy Valley with him. Sonpak Fu, a six time course and distance winner, great in a group one last time. Tom spoke to his pilot, Jerry Chow. Jerry, Sonpak Fu's been a, a real find for you over the last uh, 12 months. Uh, what did you make of his last run for fourth in the, the group one sprint? Yeah, it's very impressive for me. Last run is a, is a good run race and all the top horse. Officers and and he he won very well and and a very proud of him. Yeah. When you go back and 
review a race like that and you look at the, the replay, would you have done anything different maybe from the, the 600 last start? Um, but uh, if if you can go go again and maybe you can, can go a bit earlier, but my horse, he already uh, off, off, off the bridle and, and, and I think everything is, is, is going good. What is it about Happy Valley that he seems to enjoy so much? What is it about the, the circuit, the, the style of racing there that, that suits his style of racing? Yeah, I think Happy Valley shoot him more because the, the pace always go a bit fast and he, he, he like uh, come from a bit behind and, and, and he, um, chase a leader. Yeah, and I think Happy Valley will, will shoot him better. How's he come through his last run? You do most of his track work on him. Uh, you happy with what he's been doing in the mornings? Yeah, after the last way, I feel like he improved again, and he he always uh, is in a good form. And I looking forward he will win a good race again. You had a bit of illness, and you've come back and had a, a double at the weekend for for Beno Young. You've got a great association with Beno this season. It must give you a, a lot of confidence when you're jumping aboard his horses at the moment. Yeah, because I in in morning track work I all ride for him, and I know his horses, and and make a good connection with his horses and and him, and and so so in the race um, more um, everything going smooth. Yeah. Son Pak Fu will be very hard to beat in the class one. We'll find out if uh, Tom likes one to beat him or he thinks Son Pak Fu is the one to beat very shortly. But we need to talk about a few of these first. A Tom Bundle of Charms going really well. Majestic Knight runs eighth here. He ended up back in the field, but his recent form around Happy Valley is very good. He was on a quick backup here, a bundle of charm after winning on the All Weather and uh, reeling in uh, gummy gummy over the, the final stages. And considering he was basically three wide, no cover the, the whole way. Uh, it was a, a gallant performance, I thought, from uh, Bundle of Charm. So uh, he's uh, certainly uh, in the mix uh, here uh, amongst uh, others and uh, was beaten by How Deep Is Your Love. So that's not a, a bad form reference there. And Logistic Knight might have run out a, a bit of room over the final stages there too. That's our first replay. The second one is Tomodachi Kokoro. Is he the sort of horse that can be competitive going from Class 3 straight to Class 1? He's been very good lately. He has, and he's only got uh, 115 pounds on his back, and he's a, a relatively decent, big, strong horse, uh, weighing in last start at a 1,186 pounds. He's dropped 15 pounds on that uh, that run, and he stalked the pace here. It was set up uh, by Beauty Waves in front, and in the end, it was a comfortable margin, a length and a half. So, look, his form prior to coming was a, a bit questionable, some of that North Queensland form, but he's uh, well and truly... Um, Put, uh, put the naysayers to bed. He has indeed. As we head back to the trials now for Adios on the comeback trial, he's had two trials since the one that he bled in. This is a second behind Yoda's Choice. Yeah, first up 122 days. Um, Yoda's Choice, I think, still uh, worth following after his uh, uh, debut run. Bled in that uh, trial. Um, was a relatively serious bleed from him as well that uh, morning in the, the barrier trials. They were heading towards uh, certainly um, international day potentially with uh, Adios, but nothing wrong with the, the trial. I thought maybe he could certainly sneak a place here for Matthew Poon and Frankie Law. Has raced well first up in the past and does enjoy course and distance in Happy Valley. Yep, two-time course and distance winner, but is Group 1 form the way to go here, Tom? I think it is. Uh, Sonpak Fu, he's uh, certainly an informed horse around uh, Happy Valley and uh, he is definitely the, the one I think to uh, beat here. Tomodachi Kokoro was in. Bundle of Charm uh, going well at the moment for John Size, tough effort last time out, and Adios may be the, the best of the rest. Three, eight, six, and two. That is the preview for race number four. It is also the first leg of the six up. This is the race by race preview for Happy Valley on Wednesday night and race number five up right now over the 1800 metres for the class fours and Precise Express comes back in trip so too does Pegasus General. Owner's praise scratched on the 28th of January with a lame left four. Take Action makes his Happy Valley debut, the pacifiers go on to him, Robot Fighter is minus the blinkers. Sunny Baby's a last start winner in Class 5 and Turtle again, his best form has been in Class 5. He comes up to this grade from barrier number 12 though, he did trial well 
at Sha Tin. Speed here, Tom from Forever Glorious and Mr Aladdin. And there might not be too much competition for Forever Glorious in this uh, race. Uh, it does have to come across from Barrier 11, but uh, should find that easy enough to do so. Mr Aladdin, I thought, pretty much had every chance last uh, time out. Uh, Precise Express, and then you've got to take action. He's got the pacifier on for the first time to Happy Valley. Uh, and uh, then you've also got uh, Pegasus General. Uh, he's a horse that they maybe might roll forward with. He, he ran well from uh, uh, going forward to two starts ago behind Samarkand, but forever glorious up front. Kairish Unicorn, Tom, our first replay. There was money for him this night. He ends up running fourth, taking some inside runs. It was over the 1,650 also this race. Uh, the race won in the end by Noble Pursuit. Yeah, and uh, we know that uh, he's in excellent form at the moment. He won again the other night at Happy Valley. And I see they've uh, got a uh, uh, four-year-old series entry there as well for uh, Noble Pursuit. And so uh, there he is making ground on the inside. Uh, Kairos uh, Unicourt, notoriously hard to catch. He's a, a two-time winner of his 39 starts, but did stay on last start. Some class five form now, Tom, but it is form of Sunny Baby winning over the 1800 and Turtle again running 30. Certainly improved down in the grade, Turtle again. Can either of these two be competitive coming back up in grade? Well, Sunny Baby's at naught from 17 in the win column uh, for a class four and uh, Turtle again is at naught for anything uh, across uh, seven. Uh, starts in this uh, grade. So that obviously has to be the, the concern. Actually didn't mind the way Turtle again trialled the other day at uh, Sha Tin and he wasn't beaten overly far here and a few of those horses have been in, I guess you'd say, reasonable form in that uh, Class 5 grade but would need to front up here. Benno Jung trains him and uh, Benno off a double on the weekend. Plenty to look at here. Mr Aladdin runs second for Ever Glorious who might be in front as opposed to outside the leader in this race. Precise Express seventh and Seren Goon's been on the improve at his last two. Yeah, he has, and uh, they drop him back in trip from uh, 2,200 metres that last time out to 1,800 metres, and uh, this was, of course, behind Super Contented a couple of starts ago, and only just missed last time out behind uh, Romantic Fantasy over the concluding stages. So Harry Bentley uh, picking up a ride here for, for Tony Cruz. He's in, I thought Mr Aladdin, again, pretty much had uh, every chance here, forever glorious. Maybe Precise Express is not the worst in that as well. He last one off 57 and he's rated 56 for this. He's indeed. He's went up to a rating of 69 too, has Precise Express. But you're going to make a case for this horse, Take Action, coming to the Valley for the first time. Yeah, the Sacred Falls uh, gelding here, only a, a three-year-old, so there's definitely room for improvement. He was chased along a little bit in this uh, barrier trial. I thought very late was the, the best, really, of the, the trial. There wasn't a lot of early pace from him. Uh, last uh, time out and he was uh, beyond midfield, pushed up at the 600 metres but he was also held up over the concluding stages as well. Pacifier goes on to Happy Valley for the first time, had the pacifiers on in this uh, barrier trial. He was only at 7.4 in the market last time out as well so up and trip I think a, a big plus for him here. And he will do you. Yeah, he'll be probably maybe 7 or $8 again, uh, maybe even longer in the market for uh, John Size and uh, Brenton Abdullah from Barrier 7. Uh, take action. Siren Goon is in, uh, Mr Aladdin and uh, Precise Express. Uh, a nice ride here for uh, Ben Thompson, who uh, did win uh, course and distance going back a, a few starts ago. So 5, 4, 6 and 1. It's race 5, number 5 for Tom in the first leg of the Triple Trio. On to race number six. Now, a few chances in this race. It is a class four event and it's over the 1650. Gallant Vella has never missed top four for Jamie Richards. In fact, he's never missed top three for Jamie Richards. Win Win Fighter carries an extra six pounds for his last start third behind La Viro. Perfetto goes up in trip. Top, top T minus the blinkers and a tongue tie. Master Hero makes a rare appearance at Happy Valley. Just his second. Visor is off. Satirical Glory's won a trial at Chungfa since his last run. Noble Win comes off the all weather. Dublin Star has his first go at the trip. An amazing boy. Two time course and distance winner, but is also eligible for the top of Class 5. Satirical Glory on the pace here. Tommy did sit wide in a trial up at Chungfa when he won that one. Yeah, and it wasn't uh, real. It wasn't really any pressure put on him over the, the final stages there. He should lead to this. V Love You were. Uh, has raced handy in a couple of his starts. Now, Master Hero actually led last time out, but it's a pretty poor run, really, from him by his usual sort of standards at Master Hero. Not one in a long time now. Uh, Dublin start. Uh, there's a few on the three wide line there. Amazing boy. Uh, top, top T uh, missed the start last time out as well, and Perfetto normally goes back. But the pace in this could be slightly questionable. 
It is hard to fault the form of Gallant Valor this season, Tom, with Andrea Rizzoni riding for Jamie Richards. He does have extra weight and he is drawn barrier number 12, but he's got one, three, three, three next to his name. He wasn't helped by that horse at the back with no rider into the first turn. He was hampered by him, uh, Gallant uh, Valor, so well, that wasn't ideal, but still stayed on well at uh, the end. This behind uh, Telecom Speed, he was beaten the, the favourite to here, but just the way he closed off would maybe suggest that uh, he's looking for a bit further and he gets that uh, this time around 16.50. And that is Callan Fowler. Next replay is Win Win Fighter who he's holding his form. He's placed uh, three of his last four and the one he didn't place, he was victorious. Galvanic's going to get a good run on the rail and Amazing Boy's form has plateaued. Yeah, it certainly has. So we're waiting for him to get back into Class 5 for Amazing Boy but uh, certainly can make cases for the other uh, two in this uh, Win Win Fighter. Winning post first time, bit keen on the, the fence, but uh, did make a, a strong late bid out wider. And this was better from Galvanic as well. Uh, stalked them about uh, fifth off the, the pace there and uh, stayed on. So uh, he's put in a, a few sort of uh, questionable efforts, uh, one where he was pulled up as well. So that was good to see him run better last time out, but overall has been costly. What do we do with a perfetto Tom? So often he gets back and runs home. He's ended up running ninth here, but only beaten two and a half lengths. Second time, 16.50. Good draw. Antoine Hemlin in form. Can he figure in this race? I've got him as the, the Quinella horse here, uh, Mark. Again, making ground. That's what he always does. Uh, hasn't won for over a year now for a rating of 48. So he's still a few points higher in the handicap here off a rating of 54. But there was a, a fair bit of market support for him again last uh, time out. And... Uh, that's uh, him making some uh, good enough inroads uh, late out wider. So, look, from a, a good draw, you would be looking for some pace on that. Might be the only question mark that could see him undone here. That's a breakdown of the replays for race number six. What is your top four? Win Win Fighter uh, goes on top here. I think he's racing in good form at, at the moment. And uh, Lyle Hewitson rides here for uh, Francis Loy. Won two starts ago, and he's uh, run third or second in his last four starts. So he's definitely in. Perfetto, uh, Galvanic was good to see him uh, do a better job last time out. And you'd say he won't be too far off the pace. And uh, Gallant Valor will just need a little bit of luck from uh, Barrier 12 into that uh, first uh, turn. Two, three, five, and one. And that's Tom's play also for race six, the QQP of 235 with Win Win Fighter, the one to beat. The first of three class threes is race number seven. That's to finish the program. And this one is over the 1,650 metres. And Galaxy Witness is unbeaten in this grade. I'm the Boss has the crossover noseband off. Master of Fortune, Happy Valley debut. He has trialled at the course September of last year. And he's not wearing pacifiers with cows. Escape Roots on a six-day backup. Levero's found form since switching to the turf. And Red Hair King's coming off that second last time behind Simply Maverick at his first go back in Class 3 last time. Torbjorn Prince leads Star Contact and Levero, Tom. Yeah, Torbjorn Prince uh, is a horse that uh, is uh, always a natural leader. He's always up on the, the pace at the, the pointy end. Star Contact uh, will have to come across from a barrier 10, but does normally race uh, handy. And then you've got uh, Levero, and uh, Levero last time out was able to uh, stalk them in the trail. Uh, glorious uh, Journey maybe up and trip uh, assists him to uh, maybe get into a, a good position here from a barrier 6. And uh, Loyal Baby... Um, very close to a class drop, but struggling at the moment, drawn wide. We start with an interview, though. Tom spoke with the trainer of Galaxy Witness, Casper Founds. Casper, Galaxy Witness back into class three for the, the first time, I think, since his uh, three-year-old uh, year. How's he going at the moment, do you feel? He's going really well. You know, give him a bit of a freshen up. Uh, picked this race up for quite a while. And, um, you know, he's trialled up nice and he's ready to go. Obviously, carries a big weight. He's a get-back sort of horse, and um, he's a big horse, so I don't think the 135 will bother him. He'll, he'll be very competitive. You've always had a bigger opinion of him. Has he, has he got to the, the, the sort of heights you thought he might have got to, or has he just been sort of that step or two back and maybe struggled with some of the, the bigger weights? But Because he, he's, he's only ever been beaten, I think, at worst, four and a quarter lengths. Yeah, he's a very honest horse. You know, obviously, uh, one four is first prep for us, and... Uh, He's been consistent since then without winning, um, picking up a lot of prize money, but uh, he's certainly due, he's overdue a win, and uh, he still has a chance to get up close to 100 points. He's still only a five-year-old, so he'll be six come uh, August, but um, he's coming into this with reasonable form, and he looks like he's in a, a winnable race. Absolutely, yeah, he's in great form. He'll, he'll run well. His uh, Chung Fa uh, trial, um, would that satisfy you? Yeah, he's good form. He just, just got over them late in the trial, and. Uh, got his head in front and uh, he looks in good nick. 
just over halfway uh, through the season. You racked up your 30th winner at uh, the weekend. You're only five off for equal second place at the moment. You happy with uh, the way things are ticking along? Yeah, we've had a bit of a frustrating run, to tell you the truth. Uh, horses are racing really well, but it'll balance out. I'll still be there. There's, there's a lot of winners coming. What about uh, Elliptical at the, the trials this morning? What was uh, your summation and Hugh's summation of his uh, barrier trial this morning? He was very happy with him. Uh, he stayed on really strong the last part. You know, he disappointed us last start. Uh, we put the blinkers on him. But luckily, I was looking for an excuse after the race, and there was one there. He was full of mucus, so he, we'll forgive him the run, you know. So he, we've got Blake Shin coming in to ride him. So he's had a good association with the horse. He knows him well. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's D-Day for him now. He needs to pick up and show us that he's capable of uh, being competitive in the four-year-old series. Uh, he goes to 1800, which is okay for him. He'd be better at 2000. So, look, he's presenting well, and we'll scope him now. Hopefully, he's clean. If, if he's clean, we're in business. And that is Casper Founds talking Galaxy Witness and a few of the other members of the stable. We're going to talk, Tom, about this replay of Levero, who, since he's come onto the turf, has been a revelation. He's awful on the all weather. He'd had three starts and done zero. He's run second behind Simply Maverick, and then two good here last time. He does go back up in trip, but racing well. Yeah, and he should get a, a nice run through, but uh, I want to see him do it here in Class 3 before I entertain him here because he, as you said, has uh, done his best racing down in grade in Class 4. Uh, the three runs of the year weather in Class 3 were terrible, so look, he was better last time out, but just want to see him front up in this grade before I uh, go with him. What about uh, Torby and Prince Tom? He's only missed a uh, top three spot once in six goes over the 1650. That was uh, two starts ago where he pulled up Aurora, so he's been ultra consistent. Yeah, should be up on the pace here. That's where he does his best racing and uh, tried hard here in this race that was eventually won by 18 palms. So he'll be trying to run the race to suit Will uh, uh, Luke Ferraris. Uh, maybe not a lot of... Uh uh, tempo in it, uh, but uh, should be able to get a, a good lead and uh, would expect him to be there at uh, the finish as well, uh, Torby and Prince. Red Hair King's holding his form very well. He gets in with a lightweight, a good draw of Barry number two. He ran second in this race. He's just coming up around a race rival on Wednesday night, winning Dragon. Yeah, so uh, he's actually out of the handicap in this race. He's three pounds out, but he's been very consistent and uh, stayed on well behind uh, the very much informed Simply Maverick, who wasn't disgraced at uh, Shartin the other day. Prior to that, a winner over Amazing Teen. He's got uh, a little bit of form around him. Unicorn, who's uh, been racing uh, very well at the moment uh, also. So he's definitely in, uh, has to go in here with the, the light weight in this extended rating band. Does Galaxy Witness remain unbeaten in this grade? Yeah, I think he does, uh, Mark. Uh, coming back here, you heard from Casper Founds in that uh, interview that uh, this race has been a target for a, a wee while and uh, he's on a, a run of 19 outs at the moment, uh, 661 days since he's uh, won. Still a few points higher than his last winning mark, 74, but I think he can win this. Torby and Prince, Red Hair King, and I think Glorious Journey, the uh, Sacred Falls four-year-old, will enjoy the, the step up and trip. Wasn't beaten far behind Watch Buddy, so 1-4 12 and 10. Race 7, number 1, Galaxy Witness for Tom to win the first leg of the late treble. There is a scratching for the Singwu handicap. Out goes excellent peers. In comes Goko, winners number 11. He trialled, had a quiet trial at Happy Valley last Saturday morning and he's going to back up on the Wednesday night. Wonder Kid at the top is on the class drop. He's a two-time course and distance winner. Co-partner Ambitions won four from six this season. Winning Icy has the blinkers going on for the first time. Harmony and Bless just narrowly run down with uh, Nakoni County edging him out in a great battle last time. Grateful Hearts play three from six this season. And Beauty Glory down the bottoms won uh, twice over the course and distance. Also, the speed here, Tom, comes from Harmony and Blessed and Sus at the 1200 normally, even though he had one, he went down swinging last start. Yeah, he did. He wasn't beaten overly far there behind Nakoni County. Really put it to him over the, the final stages, but uh, just got the upper hand, did Nakoni County. Uh, Wonder Kit should be uh, handy. Uh, normally always races handy. Looks a little tricky for a uh, Maniac and Alfie Chan, as to Pleasant Endeavour for uh, Alice Wong. A uh, recent uh, winner two starts ago, Astrologer, co-partner Ambition, uh, going exceptionally well at, at the moment, and uh, Bonza Perla, uh, never too soon, likely to be back in the field. Here is that replay with Harmony and Bless last time in the battle with Nakoni County. Grateful Heart 6, thought never too soon, was just a little disappointing in this race with a pretty good pace set up in front of him. He didn't finish as sharp as he had been a few other starts lately. And uh, look, he was... Um 
sort of tight maybe a little bit inside the, the last 150 or so but there was a fair bit of market support for him and it was just fair over the final stages. I think Harmony and Bless probably has to uh, to go in uh, in, that, in this race, um, loomed up, uh, they're only beaten a uh, short here. I know 1200 has not been his favourite distance but uh, it's a, a winnable sort of race for him from barrier two. That is our first replay, second one. This horse is flying co-partner and ambition. Amazing what an off-season does when you get some luck with the barriers. He had an awful time with barrier draws last season. Some better gates this time in and he's slow flying. Yeah, couldn't stop drawing bad gates. Now he can't stop uh, drawing good gates. Uh, this uh, horse and set a, a great pick up here over the, the final 200 metres as well. He's had a quiet trial since at uh, Charton where he ran uh, seventh. He's uh, won four of nine course and distance. He's won four of six. Uh, this uh, season, hey, Americ to Spexo's there. He's been able to uh, win in that race as well. Was never too soon. He's actually nine pounds better off with the winner as well. Okay, that is a co-partner ambition. All with a four maniac and wonder kit. So this is back on the fourth of February over the twelve hundred metres, and uh, we know this pair are both proven on the turf around Happy Valley. Yeah, I don't think it was a failed experiment for a wonder kit on the all weather last uh, time out. He had a genuine excuse. He was wide the whole way, and uh, in the end was beaten two and a quarter behind uh, the inform. Uh, bundle of charm. Uh, Maniac just seemed to come to the end of his run over the, the final stages uh, here. He was up outside uh, the leader and uh, battled on and barrier 10 looks just that little tricky for him so I uh, left him out this week at uh, Maniac. And uh, winning icy off to the trials we go. Tom up to Chung Fa for this one. He's on the class drop. He's won twice this grade, four times a course and distance. And the blinker's on. And Luke Ferraris has got an exceptional record aboard this uh, horse. 12 rides for four wins and a whole host of uh, minor placings as well. Now we did trial with blinkers going all the way back to uh, the 6th of April uh, last year and he won a trial with the, the blinkers on. So uh, that definitely does interest me here. He's trimmed up a fair bit in body weight. Uh, bundle of charm uh, comes out of that race that uh, he was behind Galaxy Patch and he's got some useful form lines uh, going through him so uh, look I think he can win this. All right, he's the winner. Who's in for second, third and fourth? Yeah, so on top uh, there, uh, winning Icy. Outside of uh, him, I think you can certainly make a case for a co-partner, Ambition, who's uh, racing so well at the moment. He's won four of his last uh, five. He's in for second. Wonder Kit wasn't disgraced last uh, time out. Does enjoy racing Happy Valley and uh, Harmony and Blessed at number six, two. We're trying to hang on for a minor spot for David Hayes and Derek Lung. Five, three, one and six. Galaxy Witness into winning icy for Tom Casper Founds to race to race double across the 7th and the 8th. Don't put the red pen away just yet because there's another scratching in race number nine. All Greek to me is withdrawn. California Deeply for Harry Bentley comes in as horse number six, draws barrier number eight. Explosive Witness. Last start winner carries an extra six pounds for it. Great states on debut. He's had three trials now with Chris So. A heroic Master back to the thousand. Happy United is a last start winner over Heroic Master, carries an extra four pounds. Summer Cheers scratched on the 7th of January with a heart irregularity. Atomic Energy has placed uh, three from six this grade. Mark Comet comes to Happy Valley for the first time in Hoss. Start number 17, but has never raced over the thousand metres until race number nine on Wednesday night to Tom. We inform Happy United goes to the front. And he might be run off his feet here, Rojas, uh, over the uh, short uh, course of a thousand metres. But Happy United, I think the race sort of sets up similar to uh, last uh, time out. Atomic Energy, one that uh, can come across from barrier number nine. Uh, Kaying Spirit of Happy United doesn't lead as uh, potentially an alternate uh, leader in the race for Alfie Chan and uh, Danny Shum, then Romantic Novelist and uh, Heroic Master with uh, Summit Cheers out the back and wide maybe from barrier number 12. Tom is back, not with his thoughts on a replay just yet, but with an interview with Jamie Richards, who has two in, Happy United and Ma Comet. Jamie, Happy United, he's won three of his last six. He's done a good job overall. Uh, how did you rate that last winning performance? Yeah, I thought he won well. He was given a good ride. He showed good natural pace and put himself up on the, up on the speed and uh, did a good job. He's sort of found his home at the Valley over the Thousand. Um, and he's, you know, sort of continues to race well, so long may it continue. He's been blessed with a, another good draw again over the, the thousand metres. How do you see the, the race set up for him similar to last start? Well, I hope so. Hopefully he can uh, jump away cleanly and, and be up there somewhere handy. Uh, Ray was out a little bit on Wednesday night, so uh, we'll be certainly jumping and going forward a bit. Happy with his trial up at uh, Chung Fa the other day and how he's come through that? Yeah, just making its trial for him. He's uh, just, just sort of cruising along. We'll be waiting for this race. Um, it is an extended class three, so uh, it won't be, won't be easy for him. But if he continues to make you know, necessary progression, then hopefully he can run well again. 
You've also got Mark Comet in the race who uh, won in the, the provincials in Australia prior to uh, arriving. Um, what was your overall assessment? He was in the market, missed the kick a little? Not too bad. He, I thought he ran well. Um, Sha 10,000 is a pretty testing sort of race. Um, and I thought first up off a long break he got here and had a few little issues and he needed a bit of time. But I thought considering he'd been away from the races for such a long time, I didn't think it was a bad effort first up. He's uh, trialled well at Happy Valley and won before. Um, how's, he, how's he done since that first up run? I think he's taken a bit of natural progression out of the race. Just probably, um, he just sort of looks like he's a little bit better. His, his coat's improving as the weather starts to improve a bit more. Um, he's got a bit of an ordinary gait, but with pace on, he, he should be able to hopefully close off from midfield or a touch worse. You've been here a season and a half now with some of these PPs that come in from overseas that have raced. Uh, what's been sort of one of the, the most difficult things to, to get your head around in terms of these horses arriving here that might have had the odd niggle here and there as well? Well, it's just a matter of giving them a little bit of time and hopefully having an owner that's got a bit of patience. Um, that's the biggest thing. They just, just need time and most of them come right. Um, look, look at G-Liner the other day. He takes 12 starts to win a race and then he puts a couple together. So... Um, if you haven't got any patience, it's pretty testing, but uh, if you've got the right owner and they're willing to be patient, then uh, then you're yeah, usually rewarded. Um, but yeah, they just need a bit of time and, and uh, horses acclimatise at, you know, at different, uh, it takes some of them a little bit longer than others, but um, hopefully he's on the way up. Quick comment on Wellington, officially on the retirement list on uh, Monday uh, night. Um, obviously disappointing what happened at Happy Valley on Saturday morning. Yeah, unfortunately he had a little trickle, but um, as horses get a little bit older, um, unfortunately that can happen, but uh, he's retired sound and happy and healthy and he deserves a, a good home. We uh, weren't going to have enough time to turn him around for April and obviously as he gets a bit older, there's a lack of races for him, of course, being up in the, in the rating band, but... Um, uh, very thankful to the owners that they've you know, put such a high quality horse in the stable and I thought he did a good job, three three runs for us of three thirds and earned good prize money and um, yeah, he's, he deserves a good retirement, he's been a very good horse. He does indeed, leaves a hole in the upper class sprinting ranks does Wellington who'd been racing well so some sad news there but Tom we wish him well going forward to a well earned as Jamie said retirement. Explosive witness, Atomic Energy. Here is Jamie's runner, Happy United, and California D, please come into the race. Always been a fan of Explosive Witness, and he finally got a, a win uh, last uh, time out, and he's uh, been freshened by Casper Found since then. That win was back uh, here on the 13th of uh, December, and to uh, really hit the line strongly. Of course, Happy United to come out of this race and uh, won. He's had a couple of tri uh, quiet trials since it has uh, Explosive Witness. California Deeply always runs on at the end, but uh, didn't actually do that last time out at Sharton. was pretty disappointing. Are you with Casper again? Yeah, with Casper again. Uh, no, not quite. Not in quite. For a minor line. Yeah, in for a minor line. I uh, went with the five, though. Uh, Jamie Richards on top here with uh, Happy United, the uh, Swain S uh, four year old. I think he can uh, win this, but Explosive Witness, I think, definitely his uh, main danger with his finish there. Uh, Mark Comet, uh, beaten two and a quarter first up. He has won a trial at Happy Valley and did look good in that Happy Valley trial. Hopefully, he can jump uh, cleanly from the barrier seven. Was a little bit slow out at his uh, debut start. And then Heroic Master, who covered a fair bit of ground over the 1,200 last time out and was beaten six and a half. He's back to his favourite course and distance. But five on top in the last Happy United. Nine races. Good quality meeting at Happy Valley on Wednesday night. That is the race-by-race -race preview. The first on the C-plus-three gets underway at 6.40 local time.